And we are live streaming now, so whenever you would like to begin, we are all set. Thank you, Eileen, I appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and call our uh, December 3rd downtown subcommittee meeting to order. Uh, welcome all present this morning will be myself uh, as your chair, Ernesto Oliveras and council member Sawyer. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming cannot join us this, this morning. Uh, and as in past meetings, of course, you know, everything's being done through Zoom, uh, but you know, we try to keep this meeting rather uh, informal, uh, but we'll, we'll, you will be prompted when it's time for public comment. Uh, we'll run a timer for you, but as you know, we wanna hear from all of you, so I don't really stick to a lot of the three minute time limit. So uh, a, there's, I think we have a lot to cover today. Uh, we're into the holiday season. And then uh, later on in the agenda, we also have a, a good presentation from Nancy Adams, our transportation planner, who's going to introduce to you uh, uh, an idea for some shared mobility devices that would be hopefully implemented here within the city of Santa Rosa. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get into our agenda, unless there are any other announcements to be made this morning. John, do you have anything? Uh, I do have an announcement, uh, Chair Olivares. Yes. Okay. If I may. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, my name is Rafael Rivera with the Economic Development Division here at the city. And um, on behalf of the uh, our downtown subcommittee, uh, we would like to offer uh, Chair Olivares uh, a heartfelt thank you for your tenure as a chair of the committee. Uh, you have been a true champion in facilitating these meetings along with uh, your other fellow council members. You have been a great listener and have provided some amazing ideas. These past uh, several years have been very challenging times for our city as well as for our downtown, but you have helped uh, keep the torch lit uh, with these meetings. Uh, you have demonstrated along with your 30 plus years of uh, law enforcement uh, experience plus another 10 in city government that the work must go on, that improvement, improvements are always encouraged and that creativity always needs to be discovered and that perseverance always pays off. So thank you uh, on behalf of the uh, downtown subcommittee for being a true stewardship, uh, 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 providing the guidance and leadership to our downtown subcommittee and helping it thrive. Muchisimas gracias, Concejal Olivares. <laughs> You're, you're very welcome, Rafael. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It has This has been my favorite uh, committee that I've been on with council because it's the core of our community, the downtown. And I think I also believe that it's one of those committees that uh, truly uh, is, the ownership is, is of the downtown community, not the city, because it involves all, all of you, the downtown and businesses and those who live there. So that's why I've, I've really enjoyed doing this, really working through a partnership. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, this is, uh, I think, I think it'll be a total of, I'd be probably close to 42 years for the city, but I'm, I, but you're not going to see me go away. I'm sure there's going to be other things that I'll be doing where I'll stay connected with all of you because I will maintain an interest. Uh, Rita and I still have a dream of all this stuff going on downtown as far as housing, that that would be a great place for us to finally uh, end up in the downtown course. I look forward to that as well. So thank you for that. And, and, I, and I do want to mention, too, as far as the agenda, some of the change, because we've always evolved and changed along the way to make things easier uh, and more manageable for us in, in having our discussions. And one of the things that Rafael and the team recently did for us is that they've reordered a little bit of the, uh, of the agenda so that we can hear from our, uh, our associations up front, uh, hear from housing on issues, and then follow that up with public safety. Uh, because oftentimes some issues come up related to public safety and I want to make sure that things kind of flow uh, along the way there so that they kind of pick uh, I guess into one another and then follow through with with other business so that you'll see that hopefully that will remain uh, Rafael as part of your agenda in, in, in the order and, and also obviously always listening to our, our partners in a downtown to see if there's other improvements that we can make with this committee because like I said it's, it's a great committee and I hope that it continues on to, to thrive so thank you. If, if, if I might, Ernesto, before we move on, I also want to offer my thanks. That it really shows how uh, experience, not only in the, in the city, but in, in the, as, as an elected, but also as an, a former employee in a different capacity, especially with public safety, given that how important public safety is in our downtown, your experience has been really vital and your, and your willingness to change the, how this committee functions um, and allowed it to move forward in a more um, 
inclusive way. And I really appreciate that. Your, your leadership and your manner will be missed. Um, but it, I'm, I'm sure you're um, looking forward to doing new things on the horizon. But thank you very much. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Okay, uh, Rafael, we'll kick it off with you and the Railroad Square Association uh, uh, Committee Benefit. Committee yes, benefit. Uh, and uh, I'm actually going to thank you for that. And I'm actually going to turn it over to uh, Chris Wil uh, Wilson in just a second uh, of the uh, Railroad Square Association. She's the new uh, director. She was actually, she joined our meeting uh, last month and she joined the association, I think maybe about six weeks ago. And my updates are basically having to do with uh, uh, a lighting project that we have uh, at Depot Park. Uh, apparently some of the lights uh, are somewhat damaged and uh, we're gonna be looking into the possibility of replacing those lights. So we can again, have a more of a festive uh, railroad square, very similar to the other side of downtown. Um, and then the uh, project related to the trash cans uh, those uh, metal containers that we've had there for quite a few years. Uh, they need some uh, TLC and uh, I'm working with uh, maintenance uh, uh, facilities and uh, street maintenance to, uh, and, and the Railroad Square Association to uh, do some pressure washing of those uh, uh, trash cans as well as uh, replace some of the canisters. And there could potentially be a, 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 an art related component to uh, 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 decorate some of those uh, trash cans as well. So I am now going to turn it over to Chris uh, Wilson of the association, and I don't know if she's ready, but she has more updates for the downtown subcommittee. Thank you, Robert. Great, thank you. Well, welcome, Chris. Thank you so much. And I really want to acknowledge all the help that Rafael is, is in all his time and support for the Railroad Square Association. It's very much appreciated. Um, and also I want to just do a quick thank you to Cadence again for supporting us, um, able to take some of the swags that she had gotten for her merchants that we had enough to give to our merchants, which was really well received. So we're, you know, really building relationships down there, um, looking to really to get it feeling festive down there. And if we can get lighting on Depot Park and some of the trees, that would really help things down there. Um, the historic walking tour that we are, the first phase of it will be probably up within the next two weeks. So you can come wander around and, and uh, check out the, the photos and the, the copy about the history of some of those wonderful buildings down there. And um, new banners, uh, we've been working on a banner replacement. Again, Raphael, thank you for your help and, and Eileen's help, uh, Elaine's. Eileen, Eileen. Oh, oh, you had it correct, it's Eileen. I had it correct, why did I doubt? Um, to do replace our banners down there and we'll be adding some additional ones that will include uh, by the Vineyard Creek, Hyatt and Marriott. So just bringing some more color and kind of refreshing down there. Um, on the other side of our work, the homeless encampments have started again, you know, you know, um, basically between under the underpasses on 5th and 6th Street. So, um, you know, we've been working with the city and working with um, police to, you know, keep a handle on that. We do have security down at night. We have had some security issues. So we have right now security there during the night, um, all throughout the night, both patrolling, and we've encouraged them to also be on foot in some of the areas where we've had some problems. And uh, graffiti is, you know, still sort of an elusive problem down there also. So um, that's kind of it. We formed a new marketing committee that's gonna be meeting next week. So we've, we've got a lot of positive things going on and appreciate uh, being a part of this group. So thank you. John, John, do you have any questions? Okay, thank you. Any questions from uh, from our attendees this morning? No, there are no hands raised at this time. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate that report. Uh, let's move on to downtown, Cadence. OK, 
can you hear me? Yes, Katie. Yes, we can. Something weird just happened on my screen. Um, well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to start by piggybacking on Raphael's uh, comments and just thank you, Chair Alvarez, for uh, your leadership and guidance and um, support of downtown. I hope that we do see you living down here in a couple of years once we've got more housing in place. Um, I also want to say thank you to all the city staff who have helped with our efforts in the Courthouse Square area recently. So Tara and Jessica have been um, hugely helpful in getting winter lights running. Uh, Mark helped with our, our lighting and electrical work that we were able to do. Uh, Sergeant Wolf and his team have been spending a lot of time downtown, which we really appreciate. Uh, Raphael and Eileen, of course, Eileen is, at, if any, Eileen can answer any question you ever have. And I just am so grateful for that, Eileen. So thank you. And then uh, oh. Margaret's been a huge help as well with um, getting all of our parklets permitted. So just really appreciate the ongoing support of our downtown and our small businesses as everyone's kind of um, really trying to survive the pandemic and, uh, you know, likely heading toward another shelter in place order coming up soon. So all of this is um, all the city support. It's it's noticed by the DAO and it's noticed by our uh, business owners and um, on behalf of all of them. Thank you very much. Uh, I also have to thank Kim, uh, who has um been really working just incredibly well with our business owners, uh, taking into account what they're looking for, for in parking. Um, she's made a lot of concessions to support them and their businesses and has been extremely supportive. So I just want to say a special thank you to her, um, especially as she's getting ready to propose um, ongoing parking changes. Um, DAO made a, a request and she was able to look into it and made it happen. And we're just really appreciative of, of that uh, partnership and support from her. So I, I bet you all thought I was done talking about open and out and I'm getting close. Um, but we are uh, basically wrapped up. We have a couple of art projects to go. Um, some of the last ones going in are some of the kind of most exciting. If anyone's been downtown and noticed the uh, black columns at B, and fourth, those are no longer black. We have our welcome columns that say Santa Rosa downtown now have a very cool um, abstract Sonoma County landscape painted on them. Um, those will also be on the pillars at E as well. I think that's getting wrapped up this week. And then we also have some uh, mosaic installations going in in the empty tree grates. So just a, uh, about half a dozen of those are gonna be replaced with some really cool local uh, flora mosaic patterns that were um, put together by a local artist. So we're excited about those as well. Uh, restaurants are still operating outdoors as everyone has seen. And I think getting ready for uh, whatever might come next. Um, the 500 block is the only block that is still uh, closed to the public. They are, or, sorry, not to the public, very much open to the public, closed to vehicles. And um, we are gonna be meeting, I think next week to talk through uh, as a block with what they'd like to see. So likely I'll be sharing with you uh, the next meeting what their feedback has been <clears throat> as far as uh, what they, um, kind of how they envision their block operating moving forward. So it'll be hopefully a good discussion and um, get some good feedback from them. Um, we are uh, now officially in holiday season and winter lights. Uh, we kicked off Last week, um, we're able to, as Chris said, hand out some evergreen hangings to our business owners. We also gave them some uh, window decorations. And um, as part of Winter Lights, kind of put all of our art installations in. I think we had uh, four or five new art installations, one of which is a you know family scavenger hunt. Some are photo ops for people. Um, the way that we've structured it um, really kind of enables it to stay open and available to the community no matter um, what happens with the, the next shelter in place order. So it's all outdoors, um, it's no touch. So, you know, people can just come and experience it whenever they like. Um, and it, it is, you know, meant to be kind of a, a family outing. So, you know, something to come do downtown for an hour if you're comfortable shopping, if you're comfortable dining. Of course, we want you to, um, 
you know, patronize the small businesses if you're able to, but you can also just come and enjoy the art, do the little scavenger hunt, um, check out the Winter Wonderland in Jeju Way and kind of enjoy the ambiance there. Uh, we also, as part of our decorations, the engine is red, uh, created and donated some really great uh, new banners that are up. Hopefully everyone has seen those. Um, they've got, they're very custom. They feature downtown buildings and landscapes, which are um, just really, really cool. If you haven't seen them, look up and take a look on, on the polls. Uh, and then we have some other festive words in English and Spanish. Um, I think we've got five different words. So it's, it's a nice mix of banners for everyone to kind of take a look at as they're downtown. And then most excitingly, because I think I've probably been mentioning this in this meeting, I would guess for maybe 18 months, something like that, we finally got new lights and new festive lighting in downtown. So if you've been down and seen the redwood trees, they look really fantastic uh, lit up in, in the evening and um, it lines all of 4th Street and we're hoping to be able to continue that to go uh, beyond 4th Street next year, hopefully. Uh, so that's really fun. If you haven't checked that out, please do because it, it does look, totally changes the dynamic down there. It's, it's really nice. Um, gonna transition a little bit from the good news into some of the, the issues that we're dealing with. We do have uh, two businesses that are closing. Um, J Gallery and Caliber made local marketplace is relocating um, and they cited rent and security and parking as their uh, reasons. Specifically, they wanted to be somewhere where they could offer free parking and um, in a location where they would have uh, not have to deal with the challenges presented by the homeless population quite as much. So that remains an ongoing issue for our business owners. Um, we did, though, and a little bit of good news, have a store open last week. Uh, Amy Van Dyke opened the store next door, uh, the ne next door to ER Sawyer. A uh, very cool little gift shop um, with uh, local items and jewelry and uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't been down there yet. Uh, our Street Plus team, pretty similar report to last month. They continue to dedicate most of their time to issues with the homeless population downtown, um, especially those struggling with mental health issues. They have a number of folks they regularly interact with. Um, some they try really hard to connect to, but are, are just unable um, based on kind of where that person is. Uh, but the, the impact to our businesses has been really hard to combat. Um, if, if there is someone suffering from a mental health issue, our team often spends hours with that person, whether it's just making sure that they stay safe um, or it's talking to them or it's trying to get them help. And that, that is you know, part of the reason that they are downtown and, and they want to ensure that everyone gets what they need. Uh, but it also means that they get taken away from their regular work, which could either be managing requests from business owners or um, routine maintenance. And it, it does, um, it has been detracting from how much they've been able to do the amount of time they've needed to dedicate uh, to our homeless population recently. So it's um, something that they're very aware of, we're aware of, and uh, are grateful that we can keep working with uh, the city and Catholic Charities and uh, Sergeant Wolf and his team to try to address these issues and really limit the impact uh, to our businesses downtown. We had a couple issues last weekend on the square when winter lights was happening. And um, we had some craft vendors out as part of uh, winter lights. And one of them was, you know, really quite upset about um, what she saw and, and, and uh, the interaction that took place uh, between members of the homeless population and, and uh, Street Plus was not able to get there as quickly as we would have liked. So it's, it's hard when you it, it, trying to combat um, the, the perceptions that people have of downtown, um, you know, with that type of behavior. And then repeatedly things keep happening that just reinforce those perceptions. So um, we really want our community to feel safe when they come down. Uh, and working with Street Plus to kind of establish the fact that someone is always, you know, no matter what requests come in, 
Someone has to have eyes on Courthouse Square at all times, really, for it to be a safe place for people to come and visit. And that's um, a tough spot that they're in. But um, we want to make sure that not only are our business owners being supported, but our community feels safe coming down because when they come down, then it does support our businesses. So it's, it's a really tough um, ongoing challenge, but Sergeant Wolf has been great about responding and asking his team to be present as much as possible. So we're, we're great for that. Uh, but again, it is a huge ongoing issue that needs more resources and attention um, as we move forward. And I'll just give a really quick wrap up, unless anyone has any questions, um, a brief update on the Osawa Fountain. So we're still hoping to break ground soon, but a few more pieces to iron out. So we don't have a firm date yet, but I do hope that um, I'll have that for you in, at the next couple meetings. Thank you, Thank you Kate, we really appreciate that. Um, uh, remind me again, how many uh, Street Plus team members you have down there? We, we currently have, uh, the team is made up of five people. We're one short right now. We had one, one leave last week. Two are, um, two are outfitted as security guards. So they work kind of the afternoon, evening shift. Um, and then uh, we have one manager and then two are uh, more uh, sanitation and maintenance based. Focused. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, I'll, and I'll ask this of Sergeant Wolf too when he gives his report too, but I wanted to learn a little bit more about the interaction between police and your Streets Plus team. Uh, you're talking about uh, some of them managing or trying to handle some folks downtown with mental health issues. Uh, the question I would have, and, and you don't have to answer now, uh, Sergeant Wolf, because you'll, you'll be on in a second, is that well, what, do, they, do they understand at what point to make that transition? You know, the, they have limitations on what they can offer, uh, but at what point would they uh, call in police to take over that, that interaction uh, to try to find some sort of solution? So we'll talk more about that later on. And then, uh, Raphael, just for you, for a future meeting, I, I would suggest, too, that I can and again, dealing with our homeless population in the downtown and throughout the city is uh, think about at what point we should invite uh, the folks from uh, Caritas Village uh, to come in and give an update on that project uh, and kind of maybe have a, a meeting in the future focus just on, on homelessness. I know we've had some new reports out related to uh, the homeless count. There's a lot of new information that's, that's out there. And I think it'd be worthwhile uh, to have that discussion with this with this group because that will continue to be a topic of discussion. But I think knowing what's happening, what is being done, uh, real time would be helpful for the group. Uh, John, do you have questions? Not a qu just a, a comment. I agree with your concern and 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 um, cadence as well. With when when does a an individual cross the line um, and move into uh, the necessity of a second level of um, attention? And so I, I, I look forward to um, Sergeant Wolf's um, uh, report and how we can uh, perhaps more firmly delineate what that line is. If there seems to be a question about that, uh, it would be, I, I think we need to be um, diligent uh, when knowing when to make that second call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any uh, members of our, I mean, any of our attendees have questions or comments on this item? Yes, we do. We have Mr. Bernard Schwartz. I will allow him to speak just one moment. Thank you. Welcome, Bernie. Hi there. Hey, Council Member Oliveras, my thanks from the business community also for all of your years of work and hopefully you won't be a stranger downtown. Uh, no way. Hi, Cadence. I have a question for you. Do you have an update on the installation of the Homeland Security bollards in Courthouse Square? Uh, Bernie, are you asking me, Cadence? Well, in or yes, Cadence, if unless anybody else happens to know. And I'm wondering if the installation of the bollards at all is interrupting the installation of the fountain. Uh, it, it should it should not. Um, we've we've talked about potentially uh, working together since we would be, you know, digging up pieces of courthouse square for both of those. But I, I believe the Ballard project was delayed slightly. I don't know if, um, I don't have the details on that. I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot, Tara, but I don't know if Tara might know, um, a little bit more or if there's someone else, 
um, on the call who, who could provide an update on the timing of that. I, yes, I, hi, this I, I is Tara Thompson. I can provide a brief update. I've been involved in some of the planning meetings for that project and um, the latest. Hi, I'm Tara. I'm sorry, I just, I just got kicked off. I'm, I'm back, I believe. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Um, so the latest that I believe is that the project is um, nearing the completion of its design phase for the Bollards in, the Bollard installation. Um, it's a project being managed out of public works. And I believe the timeline that I last saw had the Bollard installation beginning um, late January, potentially beginning of February um, with construction, demolition construction, and then having the project completed by March. Um, so we don't exactly um, know the timing for the fountain, um, but the areas where the, the construction will be, obviously the north end won't have any impacts, but the south end, there may be some overlap. So we will just be making sure that um, both, both projects are in communication with each other about the footprint uh, of each construction zone that they'll be working within um, and, and that we were, we're coordinating from, from that point of view, so. Thank you. Thank you. And, and from my recollection, and uh, Council Member Clerk, correct me if I'm wrong, when we discussed the, the board uh, at council meeting, we did talk about coordinating with the fountain when that installation was, was uh, going to proceed. Is that correct? Cool. So that was my recollection as well. Thank you. Good. Uh, other, other questions? Yes, Mr. Frazier is on the line as well. And Mr. Frazier, I will um, if you could uh, let us know if we can if you would unmute. Mr. Frazier, you there? Uh, Mr. Frazier? We'll, we'll go ahead and go on, Madam Host, and if, uh, if he gets back on, we can have him address the, this item later on. All right, sounds good, thank you. There are no additional hands. Thank you. Okay, so uh, uh, Kelly Hackendall could not join us this morning, so we're gonna have uh, Jonathan, uh, Sergeant Wolf, I'm sorry, Sergeant Wolf will go ahead and cover a little bit of the homes piece along with his public safety update. Sergeant Wolf. Yes, um, so a few things to report on. Um, I believe it was mentioned earlier, but we are diverting our attention, um, some of our attention from the camps so that we can keep a better eye on the downtown area. Um, just taking into account the importance of the holiday season and uh, the shoppers and whatnot. Um, Cadence has been great and so have the uh, members of Streets Plus as far as letting us know about the issues that are going on. Uh, in fact, some of the Streets Plus people have the direct phone numbers of my team and they'll call them directly. They're very good at recognizing when the situation is uh, uh, more than they may be able to handle. Um, we Another thing we did recently, we went in and checked in with a number of business owners, uh, both on the east side and in the Railroad Square area. Uh, we've had several direct meetings with them and uh, identified some issues, some related to the underpasses, which uh, I'll get to in a minute. Uh, we made progress with some issues that I mentioned at previous meetings. Uh, Comstock Mall, the area behind Max Deli, um, kind of that entryway from the parking garage, Max Deli, and then the uh, walkthrough that goes to Courthouse Square. Uh, we're still making daily passes there. Uh, 4th Street and D Street uh, specifically has been better since well, since the benches were removed or disappeared, I'm not sure which here mixed things, but uh, either way, since they have been removed, we've seen an improvement in that area. Uh, Courthouse Square, there is definitely a group of homeless people that loiter there and periodically one or two of them will cause issues. Uh, Streets Plus has done, as I said, a really good job and we have had to get involved at times. Um, 
we have a handful of individuals who we know very well with mental health concerns. And unfortunately, it's kind of a cycle. Um, we arrest them if they happen to be held, their medications and whatnot get regulated, and then they're released. And then it's a slow or sometimes rapid decline back to the behaviors that were drawing our attention anyhow. Uh, some of these people, it's been kind of an ongoing cycle for, for years actually. Um, but we'll, we'll keep doing what we can and addressing it as it's a problem. Uh, our biggest areas of concern right now are the underpasses and the Prince Memorial Greenway. Uh, and we're getting some complaints now starting up related to the underpasses. Uh, I'll, I'll summarize it kind of, I can't really give a report on the underpasses right now, simply because uh, we're waiting on a decision from the federal court regarding a plaintiff's motion to modify some things in the injunction. And so I'm waiting till tomorrow to hear back on that, as well as uh, uh, a, a bed count for us. Uh, despite our best efforts on the PMG, uh, Prince Memorial Greenway and really extensive efforts, uh, and by that I mean we've been going out making multiple arrests, coordinated with city and county cleanup groups, and done this day after day for periods of time off and on. Um, Unfortunately, it's still worse than ever. And the impacts from that are rolling into the Olive Park neighborhood. Uh, we will continue giving what attention we can, but unfortunately, I don't think our best efforts will have a significant impact uh, on the Greenway. And then uh, I was just gonna touch on the fact that the issues we're having uh, at the underpasses this population is one that has kind of moved to every large camp we've had. They remain in a larger camp environment, no matter what. Uh, with COVID, I won't get into the complications because it would be really lengthy, but as far as bed space changing with having to uh, accommodate social distancing in the shelters and some other factors, um, we've been limited on bed space, which impacts what we can or can't do. There is a sprung structure being assembled at Sam Jones Hall However, what we've learned from our experience with this particular group, and this is a long experience now, about three years and probably 10 or 12 camps, um, we've seen great success with the Finley social distancing site and the few that we were able to coordinate with the county regarding the camp at Los Gilicos. But unfortunately, I believe this, this population will probably only accept a camp type setting and that will probably impact the length of time um, it'll take to deal with the underpasses. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Are there, if... Thank you, Sergeant Wolf. Uh, Council Member Sawyer, any questions? No, no questions. I just, I, I, I feel for your frustration, um, not only yours, Sergeant Wolf, but those of the merchants and just, and the citizens of Santa Rosa and you, you, you trying to do your job and the, um, just the, the gap in our ability to um, uh, make inroads uh, into the challenges that not only face this particular population, but how they uh, challenge the rest of our community. And, and we're not alone, but it doesn't make it feel any, any better. And I appreciate your efforts. And hopefully there will be some uh, at least partial resolution uh, once the injunction uh, decision is made. Yes, uh, and sorry, well, thank you for your leadership and, and kind of collaborating those efforts downtown and making that happen. I know this, it's a lot of work, uh, but uh, we got to stick to it. And, uh, and I really appreciate to your uh, coordination with the Streets Plus people uh, to help them uh, do their job more effectively as well. So thank you for that. Any questions from our attendees this morning? There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. And I'll, I'll circle back now to Mr. Frazier if, if he wants to comment on the prior item. He's uh, welcome to do so now. Mr. Frazier, are you there? Mr. Frazier? Uh, you are unmuted if you'd like to go ahead. Mr. Frazier? Uh, 
it, it sounds like Mr. Frazier is having some technical uh, issues this morning, but he did post on our chat room related to access through JJ Way, uh, indicating limited uh, pedestrian access to 4th Street. Uh, talked about some of the um, uh, restaurants maybe kind of crowding that area. So I don't know if somebody can kind of check that out uh, from staff and or cadency what that looks like. I don't. I haven't been there in probably a week and a half, so I can't really uh, speak to that. So we'll have somebody look into that. Uh, we have no, no other questions on, on this item. So uh, Dean Hamlin, what's going on with, uh, with our maintenance downtown? Well, first off, I need to congratulate you, sir. You have been uh, an inspiration to those of us from inside the family. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you for your time, energy, and efforts. And this comes from somebody who was born and raised here. So thank you so much thank for, for everything. Thank uh, you, Dean. Let's see, where do we go? Uh, I'd also like to thank Cadence and the Streets Plus team. Um, we've been working closely with them on just some minor issues that don't need to, to run around and occupy others' time and energy. Um, they've been great um, working back and forth, collaborating on these issues. I appreciate that. Um, like to get back to Railroad Square for a minute. Um, we've been uh, going back and forth about the lights and so forth that are in the square. Um, they are in uh, bad shape. My recommendation on that is that uh, the folks look into um, trying to figure out a route to put brand new lighting in, and that will also include um, TPW forces internally for the electrical and all of that good stuff that goes with it. Those lights that are there have been there for a long time, and uh, they've been continually vandalized and so forth. Um, I think it would be a serious waste of resources to try to rediscover those and get them back operational. Um, the liners uh, for the square, I had to order a three dozen more. Um, they should be showing up literally any day um, so that we can get on uh, replacing those liners in and around Railroad Square. And then of course, like I've mentioned before, we have um, an inventory we keep here at our warehouse um, because they're all matching on both sides of the freeway actually. Um, so that is, that is part of it. Um, I've also directed our staff to um, schedule in the beginning of washing and sanitizing, cleaning and repairing those cans in Railroad Square like we had committed to when we met before, um, as Rafael remembers. Um, so that will be coming up most likely next week. Um, as you could imagine with the holidays and COVID, we've been playing kind of this juggling game staffing wise. So, um, but that, that should be um, uh, scheduled next week, which uh, gets me rather excited to get that taken care of. Um, and I'd like to throw my two cents in about the projects in Courthouse Square. Um, if those two projects between the fountain and the new um, barriers um, start up, uh, it could be quite um, a chaotic mess down there. And my suggestion would be is to try to come up with some sort of plan schedule wise to have one begin before the other so that one can get out in front of the other. So. Um, our patrons and, and citizens can still enjoy the square as much as possible during the construction uh, time. Um, what else do I have to throw in there? We are dealing, like, uh, like uh, Sergeant Wolf mentioned, we're dealing with Prince Memorial Greenway um, on a daily basis, um, trying to keep things clean as much as we can um, and still live under the injunction rules. Um, Olive Park comes into play with that as well. Um, so that's, that's kind of a challenging time for all of us, of course. Um, I think that's probably about it for me. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dean, for staying on top of things downtown and other areas, including Roosevelt Square. John, questions for Dean? No questions. Just thanks. Thank you, Dean, and your, and your entire team, because it's a, it's a big um, responsibility and lots of challenges, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from our, our attendees this morning? There are no hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna transition to our presentation for this morning. Again, I mentioned uh, Nancy Adams from tra our transportation planner is gonna be sharing uh, the shared mobility devices uh, project that's coming before council again pretty soon. But we wanted her to have an opportunity to share this with our downtown group. So Nancy, if you're ready, and I think you can be sharing a screen to run us through a PowerPoint presentation as well. Uh, I will. Um, just an audio check. Can, can everyone hear me? 
Perfectly. Thank you. Can. Thank you. So um, before I get started, I, I also want to, um, to add my really uh, heartfelt appreciation for, for all your leadership, um, Council Member Oliveras, through these many years. And uh, um, congratulations on, on new, new and, and um, great opportunities as you move forward. So with that, I will um, begin, begin a, a short presentation. As Council Member um, Oliveras mentioned, uh, I, I made this presentation to uh, the council uh, during a study session um, in, in November. And I did, did receive some great um, feedback from, from the council uh, during that study session. And, and one of the suggestions that came about was uh, continuing my, uh, my, Zoom, my Zoom journey of, of, uh, of this item. So I'm here today to, to share a little bit about um, this initi initiative that we're looking, you know, looking towards uh, occurring in, in Santa Rosa. And so um, I will uh, have a presentation that we'll, we'll run through and then be happy to answer questions from any of the participants. And I'm all, always available, um, you know, outside this, this Zoom meeting if, if folks wanna follow up with me individually. So with that, um, let's go to the next slide, please. So um, shared mobility devices. So kind of what, what that is, it could be uh, scooters, it could be e-bikes, um, it could be technologies uh, that we're not quite ready yet for in terms of robotics. So, so the, the kind of the, the landscape is, is ever changing and um, we, we expect to see a lot of variety in how we get around um, and, and witnessed over the last couple of years, um, many Many cities in, 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 in the United States and as well as abroad have, have experienced um, these devices um, coming into their communities. So um, we, we are aware of it. And what we're, we're trying to do is, is figure out how these new devices um, will fit into the fabric of our, of our communities um, and help people, you know, whether they're residents, they're workers or tourists, um, get around and give uh, folks other options to, to, to be mobile. So um, with that, of course, you know, with opportunities, there's always challenges. And, and I think probably one of the, the greatest challenges is how to, how to make sure that, um, you know, these devices uh, are, are used um, properly within our public right of way and that, you know, uh, the safety protocol is, is best addressed um, within communities. So that's, that's the landscape. And one other item that I wanted the committee and the participants to know about is that the Sonoma County Transportation Authority and the Transportation Authority of Marin, um, two, two county ride funding agencies, they received a grant from the Metropolitan Transportation Commission to um, actually uh, launch a, a pilot bike share project. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's on a different track, but um, in fact, we just had a call yesterday and they're still hoping to launch that, um, that uh, project uh, come you know, early, early summer, late spring of 2021. So we're not too far off from, from getting that launch within, within Santa Rosa. And for Santa Rosa, um, it's, it would be, they're looking at areas um, you know, in the downtown uh, around the junior college um, and then uh, in the railroad square uh, associated with the, the two smart stations, the, the downtown station and then the, the north uh, station there up by um, Guerneville Road. So next slide, please. Thank you. So just in terms of policy context, uh, we have our bicycle and pedestrian master plan, which the council um, approved uh, last uh, year, 2019. And there's a, a, a mode share aspirational goal that we're, we're trying to, to reach there by 2025. And, and um, certainly this would help support that, that goal. It's also identified in the climate action plan and um, as, as a way to improve our transportation options, then that will help us to you know, get people out of the, the signal um, occupant vehicles and then also help us to reduce our, our vehicle miles traveled within Santa Rosa. So next slide, please. Thank you. So at a statewide level, there's actually two 
two bills um, and one actually was enrolled um, this year. And that, uh, I'll go over these very quickly. The, the first one, AB 1112, um, essentially that is a, a bill that tries to um, give folks the ability to move these devices out of, out of um, you know, a, a walkway or a sidewalk. Um, it didn't really make a lot of traction. So it's kind of still in, in, in a, in a formative stage. Um, the other one, 1286, that, that actually got a little bit more um, momentum and that um, re really requires um, these vendors who have these devices to make sure that um, you know, they have some type of an agreement with a city or a county wherever they deploy these devices. So um, I will um, ask for the next slide, please. And just also more regulations that the California Vehicle Code, and I, I'm not going to get into much detail, but they do have some um, code that are, uh, is related to these devices. Um, it has primarily to do with, the, with speed and you know, where they can properly be um, operated. And then Santa Rosa also actually has some code in, in existing ordinances. And essentially that, um, that language really addresses uh, prohibiting um, these uh, like scooters and things that are skateboard uh, oriented uh, within the downtown, specific areas of the downtown. And um, there are some other areas within the city. And so, so um, if the council, uh, eventually we get back to the council and we, we're, 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 we get the green light, you know, we would certainly have to amend our existing municipal code to um, you know, address these uh, other shared mobility devices that um, I'm discussing today. So next slide, please. <clears throat> so yeah, this is just uh, something that actually the California Vehicle Code uses to define bikes and, and it's basically ba uh, based on um, the, the types of bikes and what whether they're a pedal assist or not and then the, uh, their rate of speed and, and um, where they're permitted. So this is what um, the, the, the California Vehicle Code uses to help, um, you know, prescribe, you know, the, the, the rules and regulations related to the types of bikes. So next slide, please. Thank you. So um, I think this was, this was, um, the, the kind of the, 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 the framework that we're trying to, to, to structure, um, you know, if, if we're going to allow these uh, shared mobility devices, primarily um, scooters and uh, e-bikes in, 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 into the city, we would need to have some sort of a, a framework to, to, to have some regulation to ensure that, um, you know, we have safety within our right-of-way, that um, we're having responsible operations, not only of the vendor, but also the people that are using the, the devices. And, you know, we're, we're again, trying to advance our mobility goals and address climate change and just, you know, looking at um, opportunities to, to improve our, our uh, sustainable community for Santa Rosa. And then lastly, um, you know, to help us provide economic development. Um, and I think that's a big, a big um, important part of, of the downtown area, you know, where we're trying to, to, to sustain and, and robust our, our, our community in the downtown area. So next slide, please. So I, as part of this work, I've been looking at um, several uh, California cities that actually have um, developed uh, some ordinances uh, related to to shared mobility devices. And I think I looked at about uh, 10 of them. Um, and, and by the way, if anyone's interested, I, there, this is a, the complete presentation was something, you know, part of the council study session. And, and if anyone wants more details, certainly give me a call. But uh, in the Bay Area, I looked at, um, for example, Emeryville, Fremont, uh, Mountain View, and Oakland and Palo Alto, and San Francisco, and San Jose. So I had a handful of cities within the Bay Area and then uh, went a little bit wider uh, with a cast a little wider net. I went uh, uh, to look at Sacramento and San Diego and uh, Santa, Bar Santa Barbara and Santa Monica. And those, all, those cities all have different um, ordinances that address the um, shared mobility devices. And what I found uh, shown on this slide are some of the common elements that the ordinances in these communities included. 
<clears throat> excuse me, they all included a, a regulatory framework and a permit system, right? With a, with a fee schedule and a cost recovery that would help, um, you know, the city um, really, you know, make sure that A, that the, the vendors are operating properly and that also helps uh, the cities uh, recover um, their costs, right? To, to staff and support, um, you know, these devices um, coming in, into their community. And then they also required the operators to hold uh, insurance and indemnify the city. Uh, they, the ordinances described the, the type of enforcement and it established the administrative um, regulations um, that would govern their operations. And then it also looked at um, compliance with state, federal, and local law, ensuring that um, those, those things are addressed. And then lastly, um, a handful of them, <clears throat> excuse me, also um, it does, uh, looked at and included some, some language about designating um, parking areas. And um, so I would uh, ask for the next slide, please. So um, yeah, this is th this would be. There's two slides on this. There's th th these two slides talk about what what type of uh, permit regulations would would um, would be considered as as um, you know a, a process is developed. So we would want the the vendors to make sure that they you know they describe and and <clears throat> present uh, the scope of, of their of their operations to to the to Santa Rosa. We want to ensure that safe operations um, is addressed. And again, where these uh, devices are parked and how they're redistributed would need to be included. An operations and maintenance plan would need to be included. And the last three really have to do with um, you know how they interface with the community. So um, you know what's that community service model look like? and what, what's their community engagement and education um, business model and really how do they address um, equity requirements and making sure that these devices are um, you know, available and accessible to, to all populations within the community. Next, next slide, please. Uh, some more. <laughs> so um, the, the last few here are, um, has to do with the data sharing and reporting and and that that's been you know something that's come up is is if they have this data, um, we want to ensure that um, the users are protected and um, you know that that we are able to access the data from the vendors and and a lot of that's really good information because it helps us determine um, you know how how successful um, these these devices are you know where are people going with them how you know what's what's the use and, and are they using them to go for recreation or or um, is it to get to work or is it to get to the smart station so it, it's a valuable information but we just need to ensure that um, you, you know that the privacy of the users are, are being protected and I and I think that was um, you know that it's been well demonstrated that that it can occur with with some of the cities that um, I've talked to. So, um, and again, uh, with compliance with the with our laws, uh, looking at uh, enforcement, and then uh, accessibility to to people um, with disabilities, and then looking at you know what you know if we're going to establish um, you know as part of the permit, what would be deposits, what kind of fees and and penalties if. Um, we would assess, um, you know, for being in, uh, not in compliant with, with the regulations. And then lastly, again, um, having the, the insurance and indemnification um, pretty much uh, included and spilled out in, in the permit regulation. So next slide, please. So uh, let me see, this, this is the slide that uh, actually I included in the, the council study session. And, and it, it just gives you a flavor of some of the things that I I, I um, you know, wanted council to, to weigh in on there in November. And, and um, they, they did give me some guidance on the first one. Um, they, they, uh, there was a consensus that um, if, if um, launching this in, in a pilot mode would, would be desirable to see how it, it, it's, it, it works and then um, you know, go back and evaluate it. Um, so, so I did get that guidance from them. Um, I did get some interesting um, guidance uh, on, on where they would be um, prohibited, not only from the council, but I also got some interesting feedback from um, um, this item was presented to our bicycle and pedestrian advisory board in November. 
And it was also um, actually October. And it was also pre presented to our um, uh, community action board cab um, as well. And I, I got some really good ideas about um, from them uh, about maybe we would want to look at areas that are really highly pedestrian orient, you know, focused and, you know, kind of ask about whether or not that would be a good place to have these devices. So for example, 4th Street that came up um, with the cab um, group and then the, the bike and pet board were, were kind of looking at it in the same similar vein as around schools and areas, again, where there's a lot of high pedestrian activity, the, the Wednesday night market came up. So, so just, you know, some really good thoughts on, on where we might want to consider um, some, um, you know, uh, prohibit prohibitions for the devices. And then um, the curb right away and curb um, space management, um, that that's also something that, you know, where, where do we, where do we want to really um, uh, keep these devices, uh, you know? And and there are different technologies. We can we can use um, technologies uh, by geofencing, and these are the things that the vendor has some tools in, in their toolbox to to help regulate, um, you know, the the right of way uh, and curb space management, um, and then just making sure that we are flexible to 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 look at knowing, to know that this, um, this technology is going to be changing. I mean, they're already, um, I've, and I'm seeing they're, they're little, they're like little cars that are self-driving cars. And they actually, they're, they're, the, the, the industries are, are building these to actually deliver goods. So, you know, it's not only moving people, but it's also really, you know, migrating into to actually moving um, and looking at e-commerce and e-delivery of services or of goods to, to, to restaurants or to, to small businesses. So, you know, keeping that open mind that other things um, are, are on the horizon. And then, um, let's see, we talked a little bit about the, the transit integration and, and uh, got a lot of support from the council on making sure that, you know, that is something that we we really, you know, make sure that uh, getting access to to smart and and trying to interface with our city bus um, is 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 pretty important. Um, so next slide, please. So um, I, I I had an ambitious slide when I went to the council. I, I was thinking that we'd get back to them um, with a with introducing an ordinance, of, um, you know, early <laughs> early in twenty twenty one, but. You know, I, I think this is going to be an iterative process, and and I'm and I think that's totally totally a, a good 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 mindset to be in. Um, this, this is new for the city, um, and so I think we we need to really do uh, and give a lot of diligence to you know the process to 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 walk through this journey. So I moved that out a little bit um, more, and and hoping that we could get to council with with and we may come back to council in the interim with 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 a. Uh, you know, maybe a, 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 a permit process that we're, we're, we, we would dra have drafted up and get some feedback from them and then come back for, um, you know, an introduction to an ordinance, um, you know, late, late summer, you know, or late, late spring, early summer, and then try to get, um, you know, a, a tentative uh, regulation process in, in place by the end of 2021, which may fall into 2022. So, um, you know, just knowing that there's there's a lot of steps on this journey that that we need to make sure that we we touch on um, as as we move forward. So um, next slide, please. So I guess the only thing I would add, um, oh, on my next steps is actually uh, um, I did I did have a chance to talk to um, Cadence and she's she's on the call today and. Um, not only am I making this presentation to the downtown subcommittee this morning, but also um, have talked to Cadence about um, making a similar um, presentation to the downtown action organization. And I think that's um, targeting, we're targeting December 16th. So I will be um, making a stop there. And then I, I think as well, um, Cadence suggested that I might want to also um, reach out to Chris Wilson um, from the Railroad Square area and see if I can somehow um, connect up with, with their group as well. 
So, um, you know, there's, it's, it's pretty exciting. It'll, it'll be a new, new thing for, for us for sure. And I, I guess I will stop there and, and I um, would have, be happy to answer any questions and um, hear, hear, hear any feedback from, from this group or the participants on the call. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, Nancy. Uh, appreciate that, and, and I can hear your excitement and enthusiasm <laughs> with the project. And I, I, I know this is your baby, and it's going to move along very well. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and again, we're still early on in this in the stages, but it's also uh, exciting to to see something uh, coming our way that will be kind of a, one of those post-COVID things that we have in our community, which is great. So we're planning now. So there's plenty of time still for input and tweaking of, of this project. Uh, but we wanted to start here by making sure that uh, this group had an opportunity to get a peek at what's what's coming your way. So with that, uh, Councilmember Sir, do you have any questions? I know we have this at Council, but any other questions from you or comments? We did, and I, I didn't have an opportunity. To thank you, Nancy, for your presentation again. And I and I did not have an, uh, the mind to ask uh, at our when we were first given the presentation: Are are there grant funds available for paying for the pilot program? How what is that? Um, what does that entail? Well, who's who's going to be paying for the pilot? Yeah, and I think um, yeah, I appreciate that that question. Um, so I think the the vision would be whatever we set up, we're going to. Um, it, it, it would be a cost recovery. So, you know, as part of the permit, we would, we would establish, um, you know, some permit for these vendors to operate in the city and we get, you know, they, they're going to, they're going to, it's, it's going to be on them to, to set this up and then um, for us to administer it and, and support it um, for city staff. I think um, we're, we're trying to, and a lot of San Jose, they, they've done a great job. In fact, they actually set their system up and they actually hired a, um, a, a planner to, you know, they, that was part that was covered in their, their fee structure. So, so I think John will, the, the, the intent is to, you know, that this, this is on them as, as a vendor, but then we, you know, our permit system will establish, you know, a cost recovery to, to support these, um, this initiative within the city. So, and by the way, I've already had three, I think at least three um, vendors who, who, in fact, um, we just set, set up a, a, a call with, with the three of them to, so there, there, there is interest out there. Um, so anyway, I hopefully that answers the question. It does, thank you, Nancy. Yep. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments from our attendees this morning? I don't see any um, hands raised at this time. However, uh, Mr. Fraser did want to um, speak. I'm going to go ahead and see if we can get him connected. Third time's a charm. Mr. Um, Eric? Unfortunately, um, it does not appear that we are, are getting volume. Okay. Mr. Frazier, we apologize. Uh, and again, going back to the prior item, you did post that on the, on the chat. I know staff received that as well, so they will look into that for you. But Again, my apologies for you not being able to join us with your audio. Any other uh, questions or comments from our attendees? No, there are no additional hands raised. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Nancy, for that. And uh, everyone, please uh, you know, watch this as, as it develops and moves along over the course of, of the next spring as well. So let, let's move to our uh, permitted events in public art, uh, Tara. Hi, thank you everyone. Um, again, this is Tara Thompson, Arts and Culture Manager for the City of San Rosa. I have an update regarding uh, special event permits as well as public art program updates. Um, as I shared last time, special event permits remain suspended. Um, and so the only exception to that are certain activities that are allowable under current um, COVID restrictions. So we continue to permit the open and out street closure use of Courthouse Square um, and other public spaces downtown for the open and out activities, which are now transitioning, in, transitioning into winter lights activities as Cadence shared. So that permit currently extends through January 31st. Um, the other permit we are currently able to issue is for a drive-through toy and food drive in Railroad Square, which is happening this Saturday. Um, that is again, allowable under the current restrictions. Other than that, um, you know, we kind of 
don't have an estimated timeline on when we can start reviewing special event permit applications. There's several events that have already submitted their applications for 2021 events. And our message out to them has consistently been, we will be able to review this when we are able to consider uh, permitting large gatherings again. And so it's kind of a unknown timeline, but, um, but we continue to monitor that and I'll continue to share as, as, any, as conditions change. Um, for the public art program, last time I shared that we were getting closer to announcing the final artist for the Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square project. Um, I still can't make that announcement today. In fact, the selection panel is having their final meeting to make a final decision right after this meeting. And so um, that recommendation will go to the Art and Public Places as soon as possible, but we will probably not make the deadlines for our regular scheduled meeting on Monday, December 7th. So for anyone interested, um, stay tuned for an uh, agenda announcement for a special meeting for the APPC group, um, probably a little bit later in December to hear that item recommendation. Um, the other things the public art program has been working on um, that I haven't shared much on and I hope to more in the future. Since uh, last February, we've been working on a public art program strategic plan um, for the program and for the Art and Public Places Committee. And so we are getting to a draft phase of that where hopefully by early next year, we will have a plan um, to be approved and adopted by the Art and Public Places Committee and that we will also be sharing um, with the council. And, uh, and then a new project, which was initially slated to start many months ago, if not potentially a year ago, is a, um, a small installation on the exterior of the Fifth Street parking garage. So we'll be working with our parking division with Kim Nado on that project. We also continue to do ongoing maintenance on several items in our collection. The latest one was um, Tuberosity, which is a yellow tube-like sculpture in Olive Park was recently repainted and looks great. Um, that's all I have for today, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Tara. Uh, Councilmember Sawyer? No questions, thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from uh, our attendees this morning? No, we have no raised hands at this time. Thank you. And uh, any new attempts from Mr. Frazier? Um, he is on the list. I will attempt to unmute him one more time. Um, Eric, if uh, you have We'll give you another try here. I'm... Unfortunately, it does not appear to be working. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to item 4.8, uh, uh, Kim, parking program. Good morning. Uh, I am really excited to tell you that we've issued the notice to proceed for the garage repair work that will be happening in four garages. The Third Street garage is not part of that, but the rest of the garages will be having um, repairs, crack sealing, keeping water out of the um, facilities. But one of the things I'm most excited about that project is that we will be painting the stairwells in the Fifth Street garage which really need it. So I think that's gonna be a, a major improvement to the aesthetics for that facility. The work will take several months, but it's not gonna impact use of the garages. So everybody will still be able to park in the, in the facilities. Um, I wanted to give you an update on the impacts from COVID on the parking program. This would be for the period of July uh, through October of 2020. Um, we are seeing uh, transactions are down by about 50%. Um, our permits are down by about 30%. Our revenue is down by 50%. Um, so we are seeing a pretty significant <laughs> impact to the program, unfortunately. Um, our reserves as of uh, July 1 were at 8 million and we're anticipating a hit to our reserves of about 1.5 million at this point from, um, for this fiscal year. So um, it's, not, it's of concern and we're certainly hoping that um, 2021 is going to start to see some lifting of the, uh, the shelter in place and that we'll start to see some return to normal business activity. 
Um, having said all that, we are proposing to extend the reductions that we have made um, for parking fees. Uh, the council approved those in June and were effective July 1st through December 31st. And we are going back to council on December 15th uh, recommending that we extend the bulk of those uh, fee waivers. So what we're proposing is, and this is with input from the DAO and the chamber, having heard what merchants' interests were, we're proposing to continue to have the garages free Monday through Friday after five o'clock to 6 a.m. We're continuing the recommendation to have the garages free on weekends, continuing the first hour free at all of the garages, uh, would continue with the, um, the promotion we're doing on the mobile app so uh, users can get one free mobile uh, parking session for the value up to $3.15. And continuing the waiver of the meter reservation fees for the temporary parklets. So all of that is in, in place now and we would extend. The one um, change is that we had also reduced the value zone to 75 cents an hour and uh, we would be lifting that back to a dollar an hour. And that was with input from the, from the DAO and the chamber. Um, I had recommended initially that we would um, eliminate the first hour free in three of the garages. The um, input from merchants was that they would rather keep that first hour free in the garages and uh, raise the value zone rate. So that's what I'm recommending. And again, hoping that um, 2021 starts to look better in terms of the long-term sustainability of, of the parking fund. Um, we've got over $20 million projects for the next 10 years. So as we're watching our reserves drop, um, it's of concern that we, you know, we really need to find a way to get the program back into a sustainable uh, place. We, um, we are really hoping for the best as I'm sure everybody else out there is too. So that's all I've got. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kim. Councilmember Sawyer, your questions? No question, just a comment. Thank you, Kim. Um, you know, this is, this is what reserves are for sometimes. And although it, it'd be great to be able to use the vast majority of them for um, maintenance on operation um, and repairs, um, you know, sometimes the reserves get re retargeted and um, I'm just glad that the, the department was managed in such a way that the reserves were able to be, to, to be built up. So um, thank you for your, for your effort. And I'm glad to, to hear these, the, uh, rep, the repairs and maintenance going forward on the other garages, uh, regardless of the, of the financial situation we find ourselves in. So um, good luck and, and hopefully things will start turning around in the, in the near future. Thank you for your work. Thank you, John. Uh, any other questions or comments from our attendees this morning? There are no comments at this time. Oh, I apologize. Mr. Schwartz would like to make a comment. Thank you. Bernie, are you there? Mr. Schwartz? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. I just, Kim, I just wanted to thank you on behalf of the merchants for your flexibility. I know that the department is facing tough times and we all are, but um, the fact that he made these concessions is very meaningful to us. And so thank you again. Any other questions? We have no additional hands raised at this time. Thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, no matters held in committee. Uh, do we have any other department reports uh, from staff? And it looks like we have we have none, so that that will conclude our meeting for today. And again, I just want to thank all of you for the the privilege to have worked with you over the years in our downtown. And again, I'm not going to be a stranger. I will be here to continue to support all those efforts that are happening downtown and in Redwood Square. So thank you all. And with that, our meeting is.